And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Thursday, uh, sometimes the day in which a, a disturbance will happen. <laughs> I've just found that to be the case, and so I'm ready for it so I can have a good future Friday plan. Hey, this is Stan Houston with Interesting Ideas, and we are continuing this week talking about that idea from uh, an ancient prayer in the Hebrew Scriptures where a guy named Jabez uh, prayed to God to uh, expand his territory. And uh, that's always been quite a controversial statement. What does it mean to expand your territory? And we've been talking about perhaps uh, some other things that you might want to expand uh, that might be a little bit different than expanding your territory. So hopefully this might also be helpful to you as we begin. By the way, uh, we talked about uh, trying to... Uh, Hey, pressure, problems, that might be the way that you expand your power, your personal power. So uh, it may take some difficulties to be able to help you uh, gain that uh, personal performance power that you want. And uh, this is also true. An old saying I came across, it said, a discouraged soul is a powerless soul. Think about that. That's why we must seek to encourage one another and uh, help people deal with the depression of discouragement. Uh, a discouraged soul is a powerless soul. Remember that. <laughs> and we have to seek the spirit force power in our life if we're going to make it. And that's a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to encourage you to increase your wisdom, all right? Increase your wisdom. That's the interesting idea for today, and uh, that program begins right now. <laughs> Well, again, here, let's begin. <laughs> Increase uh, your hospitality. How many of you are thinking about the CHO, <laughs> your chief hospitality officer? Well, let's go back to the story. A number of years ago, when I returned from our volunteer mission work, uh, I had a friend who was trying to help me find employment because, as my wife said, uh, here we are after 20 years of marriage, and we have no house, no car, no job, no money. Uh, we're broke and have a kid in college. That's just exactly what I was hoping for when I married you 20 years ago. <laughs> Obviously, she was not very happy, and I remember that difficult time. But uh, that's where we were at, and one of my friends was trying to help me get a, a job because, I, I mean, I'd been trained by the BBC. I'd done international broadcast work. Uh, I'd been a teacher and a broadcaster for many years. I, I, I was certainly not helpless and certainly not trying to be hopeless, but I needed work. You know, got to find a job, got to pay the bills. And he arranged for me to talk to one of the major companies where he uh, had a position in uh, Minneapolis, and uh, that was nice. And so I got, you know, did all, dressed up all of that and went in and ready to do it. And uh, it went fairly well. I didn't get the job, and there were probably some reasons for that, but who knows all of the reasons. But um, I remember the interview so well because there was this incredible question, which I've never forgotten. Uh, after we'd had our conversation, I told him a little bit about my background and supposedly what I could do. Uh, he just paused, kind of looked straight at me, and said, uh, well, uh, Mr. Houston, you've had a lot of experience in life. <laughs> really? You know, I... I'm amazed by some of the things you've done all over the world. Um, Mr. Houston, uh, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> How would you answer that question? Tell me something I don't know. Well, I, I tried to put my best together, and I then said, well, I don't know, but here's an idea that I came up with uh, recently working uh, trying to put some thoughts together, and I shared the idea with him. Held my breath. Kind of cocked his head. Said, well done. 
That's a, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Kind of passed the test. Now, sometimes when I want to actually uh, shock people or to get them to uh, think differently, I just simply say, can, can you tell me something I don't know? You know what? That's what wisdom may be about. And what I'm challenging you to do today, as I said, you need a CHO in your life and business, or you have to be one. I want you to also think about your CWO, your chief wisdom officer. Now, I know a man who, he just fits that definition. He had a great deal of experiences in life, good ones, bad ones. Uh, he had been well-educated, and he, he was the proverbial Renaissance man. He just knew a lot of things about a lot of things. And he had, uh, as he said, uh, I have the stars and the scars from living a, a life fairly well. And Interestingly enough, one of the guys who ran one of the companies uh, in uh, this again was in Minneapolis, St. Paul area, just hired him. And he said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, well, I know you're going to go around doing some of your consulting, your teaching, but I'm going to hire you just to hang around me. Hmm. And I get to call you and talk to you anytime I want. All right. I may have to arrange an appointment, but I just want to pay you to hang around me and come into the office, and uh, I want you to be around the office and meet my people and perhaps be available to them if they want some counsel or direction. You know, just uh, I want you to be the wisdom guy. You know, that's what we really need around here. we got a lot of smart people and uh, some smart-alecky people, but, you know, uh, I could use a little just, Good old common sense, because uh, unfortunately common sense is not too common. I just need somebody who I can trust to uh, tell the truth and perhaps tell me things I don't know and do it in a way that might be helpful to me. I need a, a wise guy. <laughs> I need a wisdom guy around, around my place. And that turned out to be a very unique position. And I found out that uh, in some respect, years later, I actually was hired for kind of the same reason where the man said to me, Stan, if I needed a coach from my industry, I'd have hired somebody who had been an insurance guy. And the reason I'm hiring you is because you haven't been. You know nothing about my business. I don't need a coach for that. I know enough about my business. But I need someone to help me think who comes from a different world than I do. And you certainly fit that category. I said, you don't know anything about my world, and I don't know a lot about yours, but I know you've been around a lot. So um, that was part of the work we did. Now, we had a little more specific assignment, but the idea was that what we all need in life is somebody who we can trust. Somebody who will tell us the truth when we need truth telling. Somebody who has just kind of an extra sense of wisdom about them. And what makes it tolerable is they aren't a wise guy. They aren't a wise you know what. And you can obviously put your own title into that. That uh, because they're wise, they also have a deep sense of humility. The reason they're wise is they know so much that they also know how much they don't know. <laughs> you know, tell me something I don't know. And the reason they can tell other people things they don't know is because they may know some of those things, but they're also wise enough to know. I oftentimes uh, <laughs> admired one time the comment made by President George Bush uh, they were really after him about something and uh, something he had done when he was young. They were trying to see if they could pin a pin a drug thing on him because he had uh, he he had admittedly been quite a character in his uh, college and uh, young adult days. And I love the statement when they were trying to pin him down. He looked at them and just simply said, 
ladies and gentlemen, when I was young and stupid, I was young and stupid. <laughs> Love it. You know, I say that now. You know, when I was young and stupid, I was young and stupid. And that's why I did some of the things I did. And you know what? That's probably why you're doing some of the things you're doing. You're still kind of young and stupid. Part of wisdom is growing up. It's maturity. And then it's begin to have a sense of mastery. You get really good at some things. But then you are also able to understand that there's a lot about life that is simply a mystery. Yes, the ability to say, I don't know. I say that to my kids more and more <laughs> as the older I get. I'm sorry. You know, I just don't know. I don't know. And that's true. Well, there we are. We're going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to introduce you to a definition of wisdom which has meant something to me. Having your chief wisdom officer in your life. That's certainly an interesting idea, and that's the name of the program. My name is Stan Houston. These are interesting ideas, and we'll finish up. We'll be right back. One of the persons I wish I had been able to meet, and I envied one of my friends who literally had met him at one time, but his name was uh, uh, Eugene Peterson, and he was a pastor, but he was more than that. He, he was a man of uncommon wisdom. He was a thinker, a counselor, a, a gentleman who really had a lot of ability, and he actually took the Bible, and he, he, he didn't really translate it. What he did is he as he said, he put it into a very modern way of speaking, and he gave it a different name. He just simply called it The Message. And uh, it has been one of the books that I've used a lot, as you can see if you were watching, if you could see me hold it up to the microphone. Can you see it? Okay, it's really well worn, and it's got all kinds of stickers on it, all right? But... This was worth the price of the book. Now we're thinking about what is wisdom. And um, he said this, and he did this in a, an abbreviation to the proverbial book of Proverbs. You know, proverbial wisdom in the Hebrew Scriptures. And he said this, he said, What we need is how to live well on earth. What we need well is, and I love this word, we need people who have robust sanity. <laughs> robust sanity. Here's what he went on to say. Wisdom is the uh, term for this on earth as it is in heaven, everyday living. Wisdom is the art of living skillfully in whatever actual conditions we find ourselves. It has virtually nothing to do with information as such, with knowledge as such. A college degree is no certification of wisdom. Nor is it primarily concerned with keeping us out of moral mud puddles, although it does have a profound moral effect upon us. Wisdom has to do with becoming skillful in honoring our parents and raising our children, handling our money and conducting our sexual lives, going to work and exercising leadership, using words well and treating friends kindly, eating and drinking healthily, 
cultivating emotions within ourselves and attitudes towards others that make for peace. Cultivating attitudes and emotions within ourselves and others that make for peace. Eugene Peterson from The Message. And certainly, I'm going to encourage you uh, to think about as we come up to this weekend, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about, more about expanding your <laughs> something like that <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Chief Wisdom Officer, seek ways to expand your wisdom. That will not only be an interesting idea, it might be the key, the real key to living at peace in this world, doing well, and uh, making your mark. As I often say, what this program is about is to help you be uh, <laughs> different, unique, better, and having an impact in the world. And men and women who have and demonstrate uh, wisdom and insight will certainly have an impact in the world today. I'm Stan Houston. All the best and blessings to you as we always close with a benediction. That's just good wisdom. Take care. Come back again. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.